look for what you're seeing let your eyes be your guide okay. you know whatever your eyes are showing you is what's going on there okay yeah so you can't make rules I mean, if you you can make rules, but it'll just make you a uh, painter that paints everything the same way all the time. And who wants to do that? Aerial perspective and atmospheric perspective actually mean the same thing. Here's why. Perspective itself is the appearance of things relative to one another as determined by their distance from the viewer in space. Aerial refers to what's happening in the air. Atmosphere refers to the air in any particular place. So in essence, aerial and atmosphere mean the same thing. So, aerial and atmospheric perspective refer to all the particles in the air and what those particles are doing to images. Perspective in general refers to how our eyes see images change as they move into the distance. But then we have those two categories of perspective that we should clarify. Now, linear perspective refers to how sizes of things change as the movement of distance. We can see here this, the post here is this length, but we actually see the post getting smaller as they move in the distance. We assume those are the, pretty much the same height. And the width of the road, we see, our eyes see the road much wider at the front as it moves into the distance, a road on the same level will appear to be more narrow, as we see here. We see the trees. See, this tree here feels very short. It only takes up this much space vertically, whereas a tree that might be in the same height range goes way off the screen here, is much taller. We see it much taller. We see the signpost, this signpost, much taller than this signpost. So. In linear perspective, our eyes see things get smaller as they move into distance. Linear perspective also has to do with the way angles converge as things move into distance, and that is actually about things getting smaller. So we can see here if this line continues and this line continues, those two lines are going to converge in the distance. That has to do with one-point perspective. And then we're accustomed to thinking of two-point perspective. We don't have an example of that on the screen here, but that would be if you were looking at a house uh, from the outside, you look in the corner of the house, then the angles of the, the top of the house and the bottom of the house would converge in two spots, one on one side and one on the other. That's two-point perspective. And then it goes on with three-point perspective, and the third point has to do with how angles will converge vertically when they're, uh, the images are very, very tall. And so those principles of perspective that refer to convergence, where points converge, are also a part of linear perspective. It all has to do with sizes. But aerial perspective has to do with what the atmosphere, what's happening in the atmosphere, causing the degree of value contrast and the degree of color to change. And it always does. And we can see in this as an example, uh, with the fog in the air, all those water particles in the air are causing us to see these images as less clear. We have a closer value contrast here. The edges are blurred and fog does that. When the atmosphere is thick with water or dust particles, it's going to blur the images as we see them going into the distance. 
Uh, and so aerial perspective has to do with that behavior of the atmosphere. Whatever is happening in the atmosphere is going to influence how we see images or what those images are actually doing as they move into distance in relation to what they're doing up closer to us. So whereas linear perspective is dealing with the things I just pointed out to you, uh, dealing with the different kinds of sizes and how lines converge and how our eyes see things uh, growing smaller and angles coming together uh, as things move into the distance. Aerial perspective does something totally different. Aerial perspective will change the value of contrast of the image, it will change the color of the image, and it changes the degree of sharpness of the edges of the image. In other words, it's going to make those images blurred. And as we know, uh, the further we can see into the distance, the less of that image we're going to be able to discern. There, there reaches a time in distance where the image, because of the atmosphere, the particles in the atmosphere, that image is going to totally, totally disappear. The particles in the atmosphere can vary. Uh, there can be particles of water, particles of dust, all kinds of things that can enter into our atmosphere. And how they reflect light and the, co and the kind of light that gets reflected into them will determine what's actually happening in aerial perspective. On a clear day, on any clear day, when we can see the light source of the sun, we have really three sources of light, and all three of those are going to affect aerial perspective. Of course, we have the primary source, which is the light itself. We have the secondary light source, which is the color that we see in the skies. And then we have what we call a tertiary light source. Those are the colors that are reflected back uh, from images in the surroundings. So what happens in the atmosphere is that those colors in the vicinity of atmospheric particles, the colors bounce into the atmospheric particles and cause that to uh, affect the colors of whatever images happen to be in the, in the atmosphere itself. So we can see some examples of that right here. When we look at the buildings on the left-hand side here, you notice that they seem to be more the color of the sky above it. But then if you look at the buildings on the right-hand side, you see they seem to be picking up more of the color of the trees, the fall trees, because the fall trees are so strong that all that color of the fall trees have so many... Uh, particles of color bouncing back off them, or the rays of light bouncing back off them, they are actually bouncing onto the buildings, and that then changes the color. Let's analyze this simpler scene here, and let me show you how that works. First, let's move the picture over just a bit and give ourselves some space to work in. Now, I'm going to sample some areas here in the very distance a little bit closer to us and then much closer to us and this is what I get. This area I took from right here. This area I took from right here. And this area I took from right here. So see I've progressively taken images that are very distant and then progressively coming a little closer to us. Now, I'm going to take away the image so I can have some space to work in. Now, let's pull the color reader over and put it about right here. If you're not familiar with the color reader, let me briefly explain what it shows us. This area shows us value, only value. This little indicator right here moves around. It's showing us a uh, decreased saturation right here, and as it moves closer in here, it increases the saturation of whatever hue and value of that hue we're reading. 
And then as it moves in this direction, it shows us the hue itself and how the hue, how we can change the hue from one hue to another. So that's how the reader works. Now, let's read. This tool right here will read whatever color I put it on. So I'm going to put it right in here. Now remember, this is the distant part. So we'll just put that little tool maybe about right in here. Now one thing I want you to notice, uh, that here in, in this section, notice how the section is cooler at the top and gets warmer as we go to the bottom. So let's read the sky color first. So there's the sky color in that particular uh, place. And so let's put that sky color right over here. Now there's the sky color. Now let's bring it down and let's read just this part right here. Now you see this, this reads in this value range right here. And it reads the intensity very very lowly low, saturated not much hue showing there at all and it's actually showing that more in that greenish range but it doesn't feel greenish to us as we look at it so let's just look at what it's doing and look at the color we got that color is right here that's the color I read uh, right in this section here. Now let's come down and let's read it a little bit further. You see as it comes down then this begins to change a bit and notice how it changes now and it's actually moving over to the warmer side. So let's see where we are at that point. And then let's bring it on down and read closer to the ground. And you see it gets even a little bit warmer as it gets closer uh, to the Earth's surface here. A little bit warmer, but not that significant. Now look at the range that we have here of changes of that area. And if we were there, we would see it as gray. We would think we see it as gray. But when we interpret that, we interpret it according to what the color of the sky is doing to that area. And we can see that the color of the sky is influencing the top of the trees more so than it is further down. So that's what's happening to the color there. We might even interpret the color of the, the road or whatever that ground is there as reflecting back in this area here. It's the atmospheric particles that are picking up that color and that are filtering what we're seeing, filtering the actual color of the stuff in the distance and causing us to see it, or causing the camera to pick it up this way. The camera will pick those things up and kind of exaggerate them just a little bit, but we as painters can exaggerate them too and create a vibrant area in something like that Whereas normally we might just make that the same color all the way down. So you see how that works. Uh, now there's something else I want you to notice there. And that is notice the difference in value. The value contrast. The degree of value contrast. So let's read that next. Alright, so first of all, let's just read one area here. No use reading the whole thing to show you. We'll just read what we can see is the darkest area, which is right here. That's right on that tree trunk. Let me be sure. Let me sure. Got to be sure I get that. Yeah, there we go. That's more or less the, that's the value of the tree trunk that we're seeing right there. And so let's come down here and that this is the value. This is the value of that tree trunk. You see it looks lighter here because I have a dark background I'm working against. But that's so that you can see, I created that dark background so that you can see value differences. Now, I'm going to go a little bit different direction here and show you the value of the middle, the tree that's in the, more or less the middle ground. So let's read the value of this tree right in here. Let's see, that one seems to fluctuate in value. Let's read the value of this one. All right, you see that, that now we see a little bit darker. So we'll put that right here. 
and now we can see more of the color in it not only does it turn a little darker it's also warmer in hue or yes yeah, so we would say warmer in hue we see there now let's look get the one that's closer to us and I, I'm sampling the darkest part that I can see all these will always all these do fluctuate in value this portion of the tree is higher up as you can see right here and you see at some points it goes this dark well the camera does that so let's come down and read it more or less about right in here where it's a little bit closer because I want to get a value that's a little bit more um, natural or indicative of the comparison so here's the value and the color we're reading right there you see it's staying warm it's closer to us and it's darker now that's what the atmosphere does this is showing you a real live um, illustration of how the atmosphere will change the color and change the value of things as they move into distance now let's go one step further here and examine the edges what are we seeing happen to the edges remember we said the things that change the color the atmosphere whatever is going on in the atmosphere is going to change the degree of value contrast it's going to change the color and it's going to change the edges now I've taken away all the color samples let's clone some areas now and examine the edges so I'm going to get my little cloning tool out here and I'm going to put it well let's put it back on that tree but that shows us uh, more about what we can see in edges and let's just clone right here just clone that area right there now let's go down and let's clone these trees let's clone this one because that one is a little bit more indicative let's just put it side by side so we'll put that right there now let's go to the one that's closer to us and let's clone that and let's put this right about right here okay now let's take a look at what's going on with the edges now it's it's difficult to see because the image is so small but these edges if you look really really closely at it not as a closer in value you don't see sharp edges at all those edges are very blurred and sort of feeling of raggedness and this one you see the edge a little bit clearer this is the one that's middle ground kind of halfway between us and the furthest image you can see the edge you still don't see the edges really sharp there and this one you see the edges much clearer so these are really really good examples of what actually happens or what the atmosphere actually does the particles in the atmosphere whatever they are uh, how they are going to affect, affect the way we see images now when we look at the entire scene again let's look for just what we're seeing uh, and I'm going to use this image in your demonstration so that I can show you how we interpret these but let's just examine them right now so that we can see what we're dealing with now, I want to point out one thing and that is on a really really clear day the images are going to feel sharper and they're not going to have quite so much change because the atmosphere doesn't have the thickness of particles that actually cause images to change when the atmosphere is thicker with particles uh, those things become more evident so our task as artists then is to look at the individual th things that are happening and to interpret those so what we will be looking for we'll be looking for the sharpness of edges such as we see the images up close are sharper in edges and we see those edges get a little bit less sharp as they go into distance and then we move over to different kinds of images over here and we see they totally almost totally lose their definition as they get further back now look at the sky we have an overcast sky so the atmosphere is somewhat thick uh, not extremely thick apparently because we can still see this back here if there were fog we wouldn't see this at all this would totally disappear but th this is a somewhat thick atmosphere so 
we can pay attention to what's happening to the value contrast and the edges and the color and that will tell us then what we need to do as artists so back here we're going to be dealing with what I said going to be dealing with close value contrast going to be dealing with uh, the effects of the coolness of the sky and then how this gets warmer as it goes down and we're going to be dealing with the effect of that degree of value contrast in the images as they come closer. Painters will tend to um, exaggerate just a little bit. If you want to show that distance, you, painters will have a tendency sometimes to exaggerate the very distance just a little bit. Make those just a little bit closer in value contrast than they really see them. Uh, make the edges just a little bit softer than they really see them. But um, I think that the more practice you have, I think starting with the easier way to do it and then work up to uh, just those subtle changes, it's going to be a skill that you build through a sequence of working rather than being able to do all at once. But when, I think when you know what to look for, know the kinds of changes to look for, you might find out that you're seeing the changes clearer than you, than you really think you're seeing them. Be sure and view all of our quick tips. And while you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip, which is every week. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section, and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to DianeMize.com, where I have full-length lessons downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter, and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.